Hello my Sock Universe and welcome to uh, the review of match day two of the European qualifiers. Um, right off the get-go I have to say I really enjoy watching national teams. The action is actually most of the time quite good. So I did not expect that and we see many goals and we saw we have quite some interesting storylines as well. But before that I decided to wear Denmark. No, they're not the number one team in the change from the previous rating because the rating it really doesn't take in, into account an 8 nil victory. Uh, the top team that I have is Turkey, but I didn't want to wear Tur Turkey again. Actually, the biggest change was Luxembourg. And yeah, that would be a nice jersey to have Luxembourg uh, at one point. But yeah, um, you see it up there, Turkey, Sweden, Finland, of the teams that I have are the big winners. Uh, the actual big winners, Luxembourg, Turkey, Armenia, Malta, Sweden, Belarus, and then Finland and so on and so on. So yeah, uh, Denmark would crack in there, but I decided with an eight nil and not wanting to wear Turkey once again, uh, it's the biggest victory. And it's the other jersey I got in the shipment from classic football shirts. And it's a beautiful jersey. And I definitely don't want to wear Denmark uh, come Wednesday or Thursday playing Austria. Uh, as I said, we have quite a few storylines. I mean, I think that by far the biggest, by far the biggest, I mean, depending on where I come from, from a neutral, uh, neutral, uh, you know, from uh, over our Archimedes Arch Arch is the robbery of Belgrade. But that game between Serbia and Portugal in itself was probably the best game that I've seen um, in the last two days. So in itself, a lot of storylines there. Uh, great players involved and then of course uh, huge discussions around Cristiano. Uh, what more do you want? And of course the big discussion, why don't we have VAR or at least Golan technology? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Turkey, as I said, are the big winners. I think Turkey, uh, for me, of the first two matches, the biggest, uh, not necessarily not necessarily surprised, but the team that really puts a stamp on these qualifiers so far. And I have to say, I'm getting uh, a little bit in the Turkey corner in the, in the sense that I think they can do some damage at the Euros, uh, for sure. Um, other than that, uh, we had some... I call it minor upsets, but we had some uh, results that you didn't really expect. Chief of them is Luxembourg winning in Ireland. Uh, but in a way, it was coming. It was coming. I mean, Ireland trending down. Luxembourg, definitely one of those teams going up. And especially yesterday, all the big teams got wins. Uh, some teams escaped, <laughs> even defeat, but it was not very impressive. But you know, you need to uh, get the points. So I would say we'll jump in. But before that, I also want to tell you I have this time the standings. Yay! But I don't have chances yet. I could not. Uh, it's very involved the programming that I have to have to do behind it, and uh, you know. I spent yesterday basically all afternoon while World War, War, War watching games compiling uh, the, my, the, the sheet, the Excel sheet to uh, calculate the standings. So um, the next part, I hope that by uh, Thursday's we, video I can give you some good uh, chances as well of who is going to go to the World Cup and how it is. Maybe even expected tables, but I guess expected tables will be then for when we have uh, match day four coming up because, uh, you know, everything takes a little bit. So yeah, we'll start in Group G, uh, and the first game we are looking at is Montenegro against Gibraltar. I only saw the highlights. Uh, it was uh, noticeable because Gibraltar got an equalizer through a penalty thirtieth. When they actually had had already scored, but then build up there was a penalty foul, so and that was called first. Uh, but when Simic in the forty third makes it two one for Montenegro, it was only one winner and one Montenegro running away with it. Uh, Stefan Jovetic, uh, probably the biggest name uh, in the Montenegro squad, getting the four fourth goal there. Norway, Turkey. That was a game that I actually uh, really made an effort uh, to watch because I, I thought this could, could go a long way of deciding how this group will go with the Netherlands already losing to Turkey. I thought if Norway gets something off Turkey, then the Dutch would have a realistic chance of winning this group. However, if Turkey wins that one, I would make them firm favorites. And at the moment, I don't have the chance, in, as I said, but I would make them firm favorites to win this group and get the first spot uh, because the Dutch need to make a lot of catch up there. And the Turks got the win and it was all deserved really, really well. I think Turk, uh, Turkey, um, as I said it before, they will 
probably one of the surprises of Euro uh, 2020. I actually can't imagine them making a deep run because they play together as a group. They have very talented players in there and they're having fun doing it. The only downside that I fear is that, of course, this will be abused for political reasons. But uh, if I take that apart, this Turkey team is a whole lot of fun to watch. Tufan or in the fourth in, in the fourth minute gets the lead. Uh, Sorlof then I think hits the uh, upright, but uh, Norway was they couldn't really get the front three of Ödegard, Sorlof and uh, Holland into the match. Or Turkey actually uh, marked them well out of, out of it and on the back. Uh, bad defending and uh, especially when you look at the tunnel there was just a time when Norway actually could get something back in, in the game and may I add how boring those Norway jerseys are new the, 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 the new ones the away jersey is, is uh, great but you know you have the flag here here inside but do a little bit more just don't give me a plain red jersey like that and anyway uh, the um, corner comes by Yaziki not a great player. I mean, all those little players. Uh, and then Jean it is really fun to watch this Turkey team, really. Uh, so the corner comes come, come, come in, and I mean, the defending in there was just atrocious. Uh, so Yunchu had a not a hard time of pulling him in. And I actually say, I have to, I really like this so Yunchu guy. He, he, he reminds me of a warrior. Uh, just right by looks, he's a little bit like uh, Torricelli was in 96 for Juventus. Uh, one, of, one of those where I just look at, oh, he looks scary. Um, and I said, Norway couldn't really find a way way back. And then uh, Tufan after Chalanoglu assist makes a really, really nice uh, shot, curls it in in the 59th, and that settles the game. Um, um, as I said, this Turkey team, watch out, watch out. It might be too early for, for, for them, but if they keep on, I mean, they have been uh, all, all already in Euro qualifying quite good. I can see this Turkey team get doing some damage. The Dutch got back into uh, uh, on, on, on to winning ways. Not very convincing. It should have been a bigger win. I guess Latvia winning only by two through Berghuis and De Jong uh, is probably too little. Um, however, you also hit twice the world where you had ma ma major chances. Latvia at the very end probably could have uh, gotten a goal uh, as well. But yeah, uh, notable was there were fans in, in the stands and the Dutch are back to winning ways. But you know, you needed to win that most against Latvia. Uh, there are bigger uh, tasks coming up. Another game that I watched was Russia Slovenia, and I have to say those Slovenia home jerseys are becoming one of my favorites of the newly released Nike. Nike was very very fast. Only the Federation crest I, I don't like, but that was a game that I thought Russia has had very much under control for most of the first half. And Artem Zuba, I don't know how he does it. He keeps on scoring. He scores both goals. Uh, however, the best goal came just a minute after Zuba scored the 2 0 through Ilicic, who from outside of the box uh, more or less half volleys it in in, in, in that. And then I think Slovenia was pressing enough in the second half. Um, probably could have gotten an equalizer, but I think on the balance of play, Russia deserved yep. that win. Also, fans in the stands there. So uh, that's something always, uh, these days, something nice to see because we, we don't get this uh, very often. Croatia with a labored win, Pajalic scoring the goal uh, from Udine. Uh, 1-0 over Cyp Cyprus, not much more than I can, I can say it was really, really la labored. And then Slovakia is a team that, unlike Turkey, I think they will be one of, one of the teams first eliminated from the comp 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 competition because they are really, really, really bad. How they made it to the Euros is really... Uh, Mystery to me in some in some regards. Malta had a 2 nil lead through Gambin and Satariano, 16th and 20th. Yes, they pulled it back rather quickly through Strelis and Skrinja. They don't have bad players, but the team overall does not look right. And only a 2-2 two -two against Malta. Maybe they could have won, but Malta also had, had, had a big chance at, at the end. Uh, so this was the first minor upset. Estonia is a team that keeps me uh, keeps surprising. They keep take, taking leads um, twice against Belarus, because twice, but twice Belarus e e equalizes. Uh, in the 55th, it was 2 1 as Estonia, in the 64th, it was 2 2. And then Savitsky in the 80 81st gives uh, Belarus the lead, and Lizakovic, uh, two, two minutes later, seals the deal with 4 2. But uh, Estonia proving also that there is something a little bit growing. The uh, one of the big clashes on in the evening 
was the Czech Republic and Belgium, which I almost would have chosen, but I was so happy that I chose uh, the uh, Serbia-Portugal game. Um, yeah, the Czech Republic couldn't play with any of the Bundesliga players, which is a big disadvantage. And I think Belgium tried to take it easy there and just get, uh, get, get, get a point and get out of it. The Czechs hit the woodwork twice. They also took, took the lead through Provod in the 50th, were probably slightly the better team and probably would, would have could argue they would have deserved to get the win. Uh, however, De Bruyne puts it on, on to Lukaku, who in classically Lukaku fashion uh, dances around, around the defender. Well, Lukaku does that. Does, does, he plows himself through the defender, but with some nifty footwork and makes it 1-1 one, one, and Belgium get a vital point in Prague um, to really stay the favorites in the, the, that group and Belgium will probably win in this group. But the Czechs uh, are a team that I can imagine that they, they, are, they are, there's something growing there, especially when we look at Slavia, Prague, all, also there's something, there's something growing there in the Czech Republic. There's nothing growing in Ireland at the moment. Ireland, and when, you, I mean, I saw the reaction on Twitter, uh, worst the result for Ireland, blah, blah, blah. I honestly, this was coming a little bit. Luxembourg is a, definitely a team that's a bit more on the way up. Um, definitely one of the better, te uh, bad, 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 better team teams of the small nations. Uh, Rodriguez gets the winner. There's not much more that I can say. Uh, I think Luxembourg on the balance even deserved that win. The win des deserved the win. Oh, probably Portugal will, will deserve the win. The first half was all Portugal. Uh, Serbia, who played so well against Ireland, and yeah, Ireland had, had a good showing in Serbia, but so, uh, the class of, of, of Serbia in, in India and shone through. Um, this time, it was a steeper hill to climb for, Ser for Serbia, for sure. And, you know, if this Portugal team is loaded, absolutely loaded, and they get the two goals in the first half through Jota uh, in the 11th and the 36th, and uh, every bit deserved of this 2-0 scoreline. Uh, there needed to be some uh, change coming. Well, um, Stojkovic reacts, he brings on Radonis, he brings on uh, Maximic for Vlavic, La, Lazovic, and right off the kickoff, uh, Radonis plays the ball to Mitrovic, 1-2. And that then kicked the Serbs into the gear. Uh, poor Portugal then was more or less uh, trying to kind of save the result a little bit. And I think that was not in their way because Ser because Serbia was, was, was coming. And uh, the 2-2 two -two by Kostic in the 60th, again, assisted by Radonjic, but I think the bigger one goes to Tadic for playing a really nice deep ball to Radonjic. That was a wonderful count counter -attack. one of the mo best uh, attacking uh, sequences that you will uh, that you have seen this weekend. Really nicely played goal two two, and it seemed to be that the game it gets really really exciting. I mean, it became an exciting game then, uh, but. Uh, both teams kind of were a little bit settling then for the draw. I mean, Serbia for a little time tried to push for the win. Then Portugal was 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 coming come back, but not really much happening. Um, except that in stoppage time, when it really tried to settle for 2-2, two -two, Milenkovic gets sent off. Um, and also before that, uh, Luka um, Mitrovic was taking off, Tadic was, was taking off. And I think that they, uh, on that moment on, I actually had kind of kind of feeling. Yes, they were maybe tired, but and also cost costage was, was, was taken off, off in the seventy seven first. That a little bit uh, Stoikovic was trying to play too safe because you took off all your spark on the top of the uh, attacking line. So yeah, two two was the was the result. Okay, uh, player down, and then uh, I think it was from that free free a white ball came, came in. Totally misjudged by, by a goalkeeper, but the Cristiano gets a touch on from an acute angle and it rolls over the line, but it's saved. And that's the key point behind the line. The referee didn't see it. And we don't have goal line technology. Cristiano, of course, rightfully so, really, really annoyed with that one. Uh, I, you know, I was happy that Serbia got a draw out of that on purpose, but I have to say, this should have been a good goal and this should have been given. It was not given. 
Uh, it ends 2 2. Cristiano storms off the pitch, gets, gets, gets the yellow card. A lot, lot is made out of him uh, throwing down the arm. And honestly, he just needed something to <laughs> throw down. So I, I, I would let it go. Uh, also, a lot, lot is made of his uh, free kick rare record. Isolate, but that's like Slatan taking penalties. Except that Slatan re really said that, that he, he's not good with penalties. 2 2. A robbery of Belgrade, I have, I have to say. At least the referee, after the game, went, went into the uh, poor Portuguese locker room and apologized for his mistake. What can he do? He couldn't see it because they were not uh, well positioned. And he, I mean, we don't even need VAR. Get goal and technology. That's not that hard. At least for the game, for bigger games, for for big name games, I think you definitely need, need to do it. I, under, I understand if Andorra plays against Portugal or, or whatever, you don't need to go like a technology probably, probably there. But for the others, for those big games, I mean, uh, in the end, it could mean that Portugal, because of the goal, it could, is not going to the World Cup or has to go in the playoffs. So, yeah, it's uh, not quite, quite understandable i understand the one point that you want to have all the games played in the same conditions but still not quite right uh france gets a very uh how to a very unspectacular unspectacular win at uh, kazakhstan then belay with probably the first charge or goal then uh an own goal uh, from mali who had just a wonderful uh, goal line clearance uh before and from that corner he scores an own goal. I'm mean, not much doing, and Mbappé misses a penalty. But you know that was just three points for France, and that's that. Ukraine completely dominated Finland, but only gets a one-one draw. Uh, Moraes very late on gets finally the goal for Ukraine. <laughs> they tried to play it safe then, and then uh, Mikolenko completely mishandles the ball, pulls down Puki in the penalty box, and Puki takes the penalty. And it is 1-1, Finland getting a good point, and Ukraine after the point in France, that's a point loss, and now you're again be behind the 8th ball. Spain had a scare in Georgia. Georgia in the first half completely deserved their lead yeah. through Kavaratskelia uh, in the 42nd for 40 minute. I mean, Spain, as you would expect, pass, 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 pass. The only goals for Spain came then in the second half. With uh, quick deep balls by Alba and a quick cross in, they just had two men in the box and Ferran Torres can, 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 can put it in. There was no pass, 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 pass. Then again, pass, 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 pass. It's like the 2018 World Cup. Absolutely uh, horrifying. I really thought that Georgia would have deserved that draw. But Dani Olmo takes a distance shot. Yes, Spain can do that. And the goalkeeper mishandles it and it goes into the net. And then Jengelia. You could see how deflating this was for the Georgians. Shegelia gets a sense of a really rough tackle there. Sweden gets a 3-0 win at Kosovo with Ibra being involved in the first two goals. Uh, the way he assists the one from Augustinsson, the goalkeeper came out. And it just in his taekwondo over Marsha Azmena, he back heels it, foot in the air, back to Augustinsson who can pull it in, in, into an empty net. And he also uh, then assists uh, Isaac. I mean, the main work was Isaac, but uh, he, he, he played the pass to Isaac in the 35th. To make, to make it 2-0 and then a uh, penalty for Larsen made it 3-0. Uh, so Sweden actually at the moment the best team in this group for now. Uh, Denmark with a B squad rolls over Moldova. I could not believe this result. 8-0. Uh, 8-0. Moldova is not a team that rolls over that easy. That actually rhymes. That's interesting. Uh, the goals, I mean, Dolberg and Damsgaard, 22nd, 29th, Striegel Larsen, Jensen, uh, Dolberg then again in the 4, 48th, uh, and then later on Skoff and Ingwardsen. Totally going to over them. Totally rolling over, um, over Moldova. And yeah, for Austria, that's bad news. Austria. Again, very unconvincing. Uh, they go a goal down, and again, last goal he was playing. Also, uh, the last captain was, was 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 playing, but he was pushed down at the goal. The one thing I have to say, I told you Schlager did not play well in Scotland. However, I think he's by far the best goalkeeper we have at the that's regularly playing. But he cannot keep a clean sheet in the national team. <clears throat> 50 minutes are enough for Austria to turn the game around through Dragovic, Baumgartner and Kalajdzic. They should have added on to, to, to the score, but you know, uh, you want to save yourself because you have to play Denmark next. So I understand that a little bit, but I'm not very thrilled about the overall performance once again with Austria. 
Uh, Israel uh, takes the lead against Scotland through Peretz. Really, really nice no, 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 shot, however. Fraser uh, gets the E, equalized, it ends 1 1. Not much more that I can say about that one. Um, I actually did not watch Austria, I watched Bulgaria versus Italy um, as one of the two. Where Bulgaria was a little bit better in the game, however, uh, the, all their good work was undone by a. Yeah, penalty. I would say Belotti goes down easily, but it's exactly the type of contact that he was looking for. And uh, he steps up and converts the penalty. Bulgaria, as I said, for about 60 minutes, I think was rather level. It was not exciting by Italy, but then um, once the changes come out, Di Lorenzo, Locatelli, Immobile come, come on, Bernadeschi, um, Insigne then plays a ball back to uh, Locatelli in the eighth second, who curls it nine, nine, nicely. And then actually... Um, Italy probably could have even uh, added on, on the score. And this is the first time that Italy has won in Bulgaria in a long, 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 long time. It's also pretty much, it's, I think I saw it on the 29th of March, uh, six years ago. I saw exactly that same same game. And on a rainy night in Sofia with not many uh, players there, it was an exciting 2-2 game. Switzerland starts again like a rocket. 1-0 Shakiri in the second. Should have added on, doesn't add on, and the Swiss com com commentator, the game was a little bit delayed also, the Swiss commentator was not happy, was not <laughs> happy, happy about, uh, at all about it, uh, that it ended only 1-0. Uh, a routine win for England, 2-0 in Albania, uh, Kane and Mason Mount uh, scoring their two goals. Poland! Over Andorra at home, only 3-0, only three one has to say, Lewandowski scoring the first two goal, although I have to say the first one took a really bad deflection as Widerski gets in the 88th um, uh, third goal. Hungary similarly had got three penalties against San San Marino, uh, converts to one, uh, Jolai, then Solai uh, has his uh, effort saved, and then it's really, it's, it's only 1-0, very, very long, only late, Solai then gets his goal uh, in, in the 71st, and then Nikolic uh, converts a penalty in the 88th. So. Uh, Armenia with a big win over Iceland. Um, Iceland also a team that is trending definitely down, and you know, it's after you had this big gen generation, I think, I think uh, there is not the supply line there for a small count country like Iceland. It will take take a while, and I actually think it will be good for them to play in Nations League. Yeah, Barca Gayan and Bayramian scoring the two goals for Armenia. Uh, who? I think our team on the rise, and you know, with the Mkhitaryan. Not sure they will make make it to the World Cup, but watch out for them in the Nations League a little bit. They're a pesky opponent. Liechtenstein gets five goals. Put past them again in North Macedonia. That is a result that is a little bit like the 8 0 of Moldova because Liechtenstein was also always a kind of a, one solid of these smaller teams. Uh, it was 1 0 at the half. Bardi and Tarankovsky adds two more to make it 3 0. Elmas adds one and with a penalty, Nestorovsky, the guy that I have the jersey from, adds the fifth. So North Macedonia making a little statement for the Euros. Let's see. And Germany against Romania. Uh, was really dom dom dominant to, to begin with, and Romania just got a little bit of uh, back back game. And just at that, that point, a uh, nice pass played into Havertz, who was not offside. I thought at first he was, uh, plays it over to Gnabry, and it is 1 0. Germany should have added after that. Uh, they hit, I think, um, the bar. Uh, was it Koretzka or, no, or Kimmich? Uh, was deflected the bar. Uh, but definitely more chances for, for Germany who again play, play in these black jerseys, which I'm not sure how crazy I am about these. I mean, if one side they're nice, but I don't like the blacker stuff and, you know, Germany in black. Yeah, also didn't like Nesnes at the Romania in yellow and white. That doesn't look right. In the end, though, it would have almost bitten Germany, uh, Germany to not get uh, the second goal because Romania could have well equalized. And with that, the first real standings. Group A, Serbia ahead of Por Portugal and Luxembourg being in there. Azerbaijan, especially Ireland, probably already out, out of the running for that one. And again, only the group winner goes through the World Cup. The second place team goes in the playoff uh, where there are only three spots available. And I'll show you who at the current standings would go in the playoff, which uh, doesn't mean anything at, at the moment, but just as an exercise. Um, Sweden, as I said, 
getting the points. Spain uh, with four points uh, needs to play a little bit catch up, although they have been doing well against Sweden. Italy ahead on goal difference over Switzerland. I think it will be between those two teams who, who, who will get first and second. Italy having lately uh, had always a little bit trouble winning a group. France also now uh, clear ahead of uh, ahead in, the, in this group because everyone else is playing a draw. So if you get the win, of course, that brings you forward. Uh, the Czechs and Belgium also, I think, are the class in this group. Wales will have a little say in that one, but I would expect the Czechs and Belgium to make the first two spots. Um, group F, I honestly have to say Denmark looks really, 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 really strong. A lot will hinge on the tie now uh, between Austria and Denmark, I have, I have to say. Uh, Scotland... If they would have pulled, pulled up, uh, picked up a win in Israel, I would have said Scotland uh, could have a say. <sighs> I actually think it's between Austria and Scotland for a spot two. And Denmark will go uh, through. Turkey, very much the class in the group so, so far. Uh, let, let's see what the Dutch will do. Montenegro, a uh, surprise. Six points, but you know, they only played Lat when Gibraltar so far, so you would expect them to pick up the six points. Russia, very well on the way, way to the World Cup. Croatia having some uh, st early struggles. Uh, let's see about Slovenia. Slovakia, I think, is out, out of it. England having an advantage. Yes, they only played Albania and San Marino. Uh, a lot will hinge here on how, how, how to play against Poland. I think this, could, this is a tricky group, but I think England will uh, just about man manage it. Germany will have, 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 have it easy in this group, but I think the race for second spot between Armenia, North Macedonia, Romania, potentially Iceland, although I don't think Iceland will go in there, will be interesting. And here you see all the second place teams currently that would be in the playoff, and the uh, mode is crazy. Uh, they rank them according to uh, the games against the uh, best five teams in each group. So for the groups of six, the six place teams, the results are taken out. And then the top six teams are being seeded with random order, kind of, and then uh, you put into playoff paths and you play against the non city teams and the last two spots, because we have 10, 10, 10 groups, go on the two best group winners from the Nations League. Yes, at the moment that would be Wales and Hungary, but uh, let's see, this will change around a lot. I will just keep it there. As you see, I don't have the probabilities or the chances of anything yet. What will happen on Tuesday and Wednesday? Let's look at a few, uh, if we have interesting games. Uh, I would have said not too long ago, Slovakia, Russia, but no, but this will be an easy, easy win for Slovakia. Uh, Luxembourg, Portugal. Interesting because there's so many uh, poor Portuguese people in Luxembourg, so I think they will have a rousing welcome. Um, I think everything in Group G will be easy. Wales, Czech Republic, probably uh, the pick of the bunch there on Tuesday. I have, I have had to say because Wales will really will need to get a win there. Uh, Germany, North Macedonia, I think will also be easy. Um, Greece, Georgia, Spain, Kosovo, yeah, not, nothing really too, too exciting out, out there. Um, let's look at the next one. Uh, Bosnia against France, potentially, potentially. Austria, Denmark, that's a big one. And England, Poland, that's also a big one. I think those are the two standout games and they're happening at the same time, so probably. Uh, watch those in parallel. Poo, lots to say here. A lot's happening. I really enjoyed the international break and the World Cup qualifying so far. Let, let me know what you thought about all these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all updates, all things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.